right eye. Oh, I have a new toy. Got rid of the 1190 Tato and I have gone to the 690 after much thought and discussion with a few people. I had my heart set on the 790 when they first come out. But um, after talking, to a few guys and me myself I am predominantly off-road off-road rider I've ridden 450s most of my life single track enduro I've raced um, I've got the 1190 to get into this adventure riding thinking you know just a big big tour nice and comfy but once I got onto the dirt uh, that's when my instinct kicked in and 1190s were just a little bit too big so 790 was on the cards but then again as much as I wanted it um, was actually the dealer that I bought it off um, talked me basically said right I lay your pros and cons on the table and I did said mate you do more off-road than on-road um, you just said you don't care about on-road at the end of the day the 790 carries its weight really really well it feels light it really does feel light and I did write one but he said at the end of the day 200 kilos is still 200 kilos you can't hide that and um, yeah I've done one little ride I've got 250 K's on it still running her in and um, yeah, probably the best best decision I made. I'm, I'm really happy so far. Like I, I like everyone. Thought righto, I'll get this one. I'll put the uh, raid front rally tower on the front because I need wind protection protection. But you know what? It's actually not that bad. Like I'm quite surprised how you know. There's 110 and I'm fine. Like, it doesn't annoy me at all. The 1190 with the windscreen actually caused a lot of buffeting and these helmets, they just wobble and shake in the turbulence where because I'm getting hit probably just above the chest, my helmet's getting the full, full breeze and it's actually the best it's ever felt. I actually hated this helmet. I actually now like it. Um, but yeah, like so smooth on the highway, like it had to be the new 690s with the dual balance shafts and the, all the, you know, the lean angle ABS and all that. Um, I don't think I would have went the older one for the vibration sides of things, but yeah, here we are. There's one thing I just want to do. I've got the off-road dongle. Now they're really good. Two, three, four, five. But, uh, the off-road dongle keeps your settings. The ABS settings and your traction control. Um, but one thing they don't do, you don't get the three options. So you don't get Full ABS, off-road ABS, and no ABS. You only get off-road ABS and no ABS. So that's one thing with the dongles for these 690s is that you can only have, when it's in, you only get off-road ABS and no ABS. You can't have full ABS to the front reading. But to me, it doesn't worry me. I'm not 
pancaking this thing through the twisties on the bitumen, I'm just using it to get to where I want to go on the dirt. But yeah, um, one thing I have noticed um, from my first sort of ride is the traction control. When it's in uh, map 2, um, it's sort of what they call the off-road map, so it allows the wheel to spin, um, it allows you to wheel stand, but what I did find is if you're coming around the corner and you're coming in hot and you're standing, you're up on the pegs and you give us some sugar to get the ass end out and really, you know, drift around, it will get out a certain far, a certain distance and it will pull itself back in. It will just, like it's not, it's not scary, it's not dangerous, but just where you're controlling a slide, it sort of kicks in where you still want to have control. And so, yeah, I just turn traction control off. Um, riding with mode one or mode two doesn't really, you know, I don't know, they say mode two's, off-road mode's more smoother. Um, map one's for more road, it's a bit more peaky, but you know, it just depends how you ride. There is probably a little bit of difference, I probably do like map one the best. Um, but yeah, one thing I have done to this already is of uh, I've just got some bar risers, so I'm just testing out my new bar risers. Um, turn that up a bit. So yeah, I've got 30 mil risers. So yeah, uh, it does feel heaps better standing up. Um, yeah, this bike narrow. It is really narrow. It does feel like um, a bit of a 450 stance, if that makes any sense. Um, like to me, I'm humming and harring and getting some steak pegs, which I always had on my 450s, because it is narrow to actually squeeze around the seat. But um, yeah, no, really enjoying it. Like it's just really fun bike to ride it's what I it's what I wanted it's what I should have got originally but I'm glad I didn't because I probably would have got the old 690 which I still reckon is pretty good but where this thing is different is the suspension plus a lot of a few other things as well but mainly the suspension I've never got on a bike and rode it I've always had to up the suspension change of springs i'm 105 kilos so most of the exes although mainly all the exes are for a 75 to 80 kilo rider so first thing spring upgrade this thing out of the box is spot on the back is even probably a little stiff i've actually got it on the comfy setting because it's actually a little bit stiff now i know it is designed to carry some weight so that would be really good. And the front, I've hit some big washouts and I've, I've G'd it out a few times to try and, and I haven't bottomed it out yet. So, um, to get a bike straight out of the factory, off the showroom floor and I can ride it. Like I don't have to change a spring right and it handles unreal. Like it soaks up some bumps really, really good. Like, unbelievable. And the quick shifter. I've just got new tyres, so I'm just getting a. Just got some. Just got some knobbies put on it, so I'm just sort of. I've just had the original ones on it. They just these are just. Yeah. Just getting the feel of them. We've had a couple of showers of rain, so it's no dust. Um, yeah. So I'm running the Dunlop uh, 606 on the rear and the, I think it's a Pirelli Scorpion Rally on the front which is the go-to tyre for a lot of bike riders like even your big adventure riders on the Africa Twins except they'll run this front end and even I know a few guys on the 790 they run this front end 
but they run the Motoz Tractionator on the back, either the Rally Z or the Desert HT, just because they're a heavier bike. Um, yeah, just because they're a lot heavier bike. Um, I don't know, see how this Dunlop ha handles, like, on the big bikes, yeah, the, the tyres are super expensive, like, it was 300 and something dollars just for a rear tyre, where, you know, now I'm on to a 18 with a tube, I'm staying with tubes this time, um, I'm sort of, you know, you're 130, 145 dollars for a rear tyre, so even the low tyres are sort of like, like 150 bucks, I think, so, I was told these um, yeah I told I was told the Dunlops will wear out pretty quick. So yeah, that's what we're talking about. So yeah, we'll um time will tell. Love this thing, so that's 80k an hour, fourth gear, just power wheelie. Really. Loves it. Rough stuff. Handles it pretty good. Here we go again, another one. So also I've done put some Ballard's heated grips on it. Um, just some cheap ones just for now. I want to use these grips. I love these grips on the 450s. I, I used to always love the pillow tops, Pro Tapers. So, I thought sort I of won't get the Oxford heater grips just yet, I'll just get the Ballard's ones, so I can put them under these grips and just, hey, for 50 bucks, just see what they do. And then same as my tyre pressure monitoring system, which is down there. Just eBay, 50 or 60 bucks. Um, happy days. Um, KTM Rally foot pegs, you've got to have them. Um, a lot wider, a lot better platform. Um, these are just an aftermarket cheap mirror which I can fold in. I'm not sold on these yet at all. Uh, I think this one's playing up a little bit. But, uh, yeah. Anyway, it's a bit of a burn. Quick shifter, unbelievable. And just got to watch out for the kangaroos. Uh, they're out and about, so the grass is a bit long. Anyway, I'll pull up a little bit further down the road and I'll, um, I'll show you the bike. Oh no. Came to a blocked road which I normally take and the uh, bridge was out. So just had to do a little bit of uh, bit of bitumen to get and totally change the way I was gonna go today. But anyway, that's part of the fun. Anyway, you get a good view from here anyway. Good spot. So yeah, if you're on the fence about a 790 or a 690, especially the new 690, um, just really sit down and think what kind of riding you're going to be doing. Like, this is going to be real, or it is, really good off-road. But like even, I've just done, yeah, 30 k's of bitumen, fine, 110, not even a worry in the world, comfortable. Not as comfortable as a 790, but you know, if you're that person that uses the bitumen just to get to the dirt roads, I think the 690 would be the better pick. That's my opinion, and that's what I went. It's a nice little look out up here. We'll have a look at. Ripper of a spot. <laughs> T 
top of the world. So, let's have a look at this bike, eh? So yeah, there she is. Um, the B and B Regard really fitted this Oxford 36 litre bag really well. I'm um, very happy with that. I had that on my old bike. Um, I will be going to the Krieger OS system for here for the bags. Um, yeah, and I will eventually get the Raid Garage 5.5 litre front tank just to increase the range. I did do, I've done the first 200 Ks and filled up and used 9.2 litres. Um, so going off that, it's given me a 250 safe range of fuel with what I've got and between 250 and 300 so yeah so the Dunlop D606 rear I'm running and yeah Pirelli Scorpion Rally front oh and I will get a bash plate I think that's something I have to do yeah happy days let's keep cracking now a few people have complained about the stock seat being um, quite uncomfortable so yes I probably will still get a seat concepts seat um, I just couldn't they're not in stock at the moment so what I done where I live we've got a really good upholsterer and he's um He's a rider himself and he's done a few of my seats now where he just adds a bit more foam, some really good memory foam and that different layers in some crucial spots where your pressure points are and he has done this seat and you know for a fraction of the price I mean yeah you wouldn't even blink about it you just do it and it has made a hell of a difference like I've got what he's done is it's where you sit back a bit it's just a little bit wider and a little bit more padding but it doesn't slope down and push your tooth the other one will push you forward just gives you that when you're cruising on the road or you're cruising on some nice straight spots and you just want to sit down and relax you just sit back a little bit and it's actually quite comfortable it's actually heaps better than what it was like massive difference like i said probably no seat concept seat but when you're paying five to six hundred dollars for a seat concept seat, you expect it to do wonders. So, and he just used, um, he had gripper seat cover there, so we just rewrapped it in gripper. And the best thing is that what he's put in, you can take out and put your original seat cover back on. But, um, I won't be doing that. That's just, yeah, it's comfy. It's really good. Massive difference. careful these roads because it's a um, normally high traffic area of cars.
Bottle Creek Road. Did miss a guy? Road. Whoa! Oh! Oh! Up. A bit more off-road, but very slippery. Hey! Jeez! Slippery, slippery. Could be interesting. Someone's come through in the F4B. Oh. oh, this is where they got stuck. Oh, it would have been good if this was dry, because this would have been a good tractor. <laughs> Review this big girl. See how she went. Oh, glad I'm going down. Where's a leaf? Jesus. I came here, this wasn't all <laughs> looked after. It's been mowed, been good. Dodge all the uh, cow shit. Damn. 